Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our peace opening with Don Dawson from the beautiful Manitoulin Island. And so we are going to turn the show over to Don. Good morning, everyone, and Ani. This morning, I am coming to you uh, from Chiging on Manitoulin Island. And if you are looking for Chiging on a map of Manitoulin Island, the M is silent. <laughs> it's M apostrophe C H I G E E N G. Um, this location and the first peace poll I'm coming to you from today is actually at the Min or sorry, the Manitoulin Secondary School. This is our high school on Manitoulin Island. All of these students from across the entire island come to this high school in the north central area of Manitoulin. Uh, because we are very, um, the cultures on Manitoulin, the communities all work together. Um, it's very important here, MSS, that the cultures are represented. So in May of 2012, they erected this peace pole. On the peace pole, on the front side that I'm showing you now is in Ojibwe. And on the other side of our peace pole this morning, you can see it says, may peace prevail. This location on Manitoulin is very dear to all the people of the island, all of the haw eaters, all of those that have grown up here because of going to this high school. Um, other things that have happened here at this high school is that because of the cultures, they decided when they just did uh, renovations a few years ago in honor of the 50th anniversary, that they would incorporate more Anishinaabe culture into our schools. And in the school, we actually have a smudging room and a sacred fire, which at a different time, it'd be wonderful to show everybody the actually in the interior and uh, how important it is in creating a peaceful environment here on Manitoulin. The other thing I wanted to show you this morning here at this site is our, the entrance way to the school. This was dedicated to First Nation. It is a, okay. So in behind me is, um, this is actually a sculpture uh, made of steel and it represents the Anishinaabe Seven Fires prophecy in to our school. So kids can uh, see that as they enter and it's to create a sense of peace within all of the communities here on the island. Um, last fall, we had a rough well, winter, I guess, November. We had a very devastating uh, something happened here on Manitoulin. And this morning, our theme today is discover here, to come mark living in a shooting. So in November, we, we did lose Constable Hoving. And because this is a central location on Manitoulin, this is where the service was held. We had a um, sweat lodge put up. They did the traditional smudging before the services. And I think it's really important as we discover that as families of faith on Manitoulin, even if we go to different churches of different faiths, um, we all find each other. And the hope is one their connection faith. And one of the things that his wife said right here at his funeral, and I think it's very important, and those of Manitoulin hold on to the words, his wife said, whatever it is that anger and outrage are helping you accomplish, love will do a better job. So we hope to discover peace here, just as those that were at that service here discovered. So now 
um, I ask you to join me in prayer this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us as we discover peace here this week. That the sessions we have this week together through our Naranto online setting bring us comfort and have us discover the peace in our hearts that help us go forward in this world in a peaceful setting towards the peaceful one. Please be with all those that are speaking today, all those that need strength and comfort today to find their internal peace. Magwitch, 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 Magwitch. Amen. Does anybody have any um, questions about the location I'm at? Is there anything I haven't uh, shown you or that I can stand in one place and answer? That was beautiful, Dawn. Um, very, very meaningful. And I would like to have that quotation. If you can send it to, to me, Kathy, I would really love that quotation. It's just, uh, that was an exceptional thing. Certainly, I can certainly do that. As I say, it's very meaningful to all of us here. Um, my daughter knew the family very well because of her time at youth groups on the island. And I used to come and pick kids up here at the high school and take them to the community youth group in um, Minamoya. And the, the Hovings were leaders at the youth group. So that's why they were very, a, faith, a family of faith on our, in our Manitoulin community. Don is Daryl speaking. I wanted yes. to wanted to thank you for um, doing this live for us. And if it's possible, Don, could you take a picture of the um, entrance way to the school? I'd love Certainly. to see a picture of that at some point in time and post that. And as Kathy said, I'd love a copy of what the, the uh, prayer or what the uh, reading was that uh, you had shared for us. So uh, and what a great way to to re, uh, reconnect with the Manitoulin Island and your congregation, because I know your congregation is so involved in um, peace with uh, your Peacemakers Club and so on. So blessings to your, you and your uh, folks this week that are your guests. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, so all week I'm going to try and find a different location. I have them kind of scoped out already and we'll come to different places of peace and the peace pools across Manitoulin. Unfortunately, the one big community I was hoping to share with you has gone back into lockdown because of um, cases uh, that are, are trending upward. So I don't know if I'll be able to get there by Friday or not. But if not, there's other peaceful locations on the island I will hopefully show you. Thank you so much, Dawn. What okay. an exceptional idea. <laughs> it's a first for us. So yeah. thank you for being a first. No problem. I Don, I love the peace poll. Well, thank you. I hope everyone likes them as we continue on through the week, the different ones. I, I was hoping to find someone that could speak, speak Ojibwe and actually translate specifically for you, but maybe by the end of the week. Are you a teacher, Don? No. I'm a bookkeeper. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> he is a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> a teacher in other yes. ways. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, I hope everyone uh, has a good week and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Thanks, Don. Thank you, Don. Give her a wave out. <laughs> Say hello to Weston for me, Don. <laughs> okay. Yes, I will. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Welcome to All Voices Canada with John Hamer. And now we will turn the presentation over to John. Good morning, everyone. I am so happy to see all of your smiling faces here um, uh, at the beginning of this amazing, uh, anyway, the weekday portion, anyway, this amazing uh, e-camping program of the Naranto reunion. I'm really grateful uh, to Kathy and to the entire uh, Naranto programming uh, team and for the invitation, and the uh, uh, opportunity to be able to speak to you all today about uh, the all voices discerning across Canada process. Uh, and also thank you so much to Scott for all of the technical work that he's doing. Um, it, it's, it's always um, wonderful when we have uh, the ability to do this. And so uh, when, we, when, when we practice ahead of time and have all the details out ahead of time, it makes it uh, very smooth. And I just really appreciate it also being able to start the day and the week with uh, at the Peace Poll, one of the, one of the first Peace Polls anyway from Manitoulin Island. What a neat, what a neat uh, experience. Um, so let me, uh, I'll share my screen here and see if this is going to work. Are people seeing that? Want to maybe do this if you are? Uh, let me get the full screen up. <sighs> All voices discerning across Canada. So probably um, you will have heard of this a little bit because of uh, many of you will have, been, let's say, participated in the first All Voices Zoom conference that we had earlier this year. And if you have, for example, been watching either Beyond the Walls or even yesterday, the, the Vancouver online service where several of the testimonies were shared and Apostle Art Smith was uh, uh, speaking, um, th there's been opportunities to uh, hear about uh, this process. And also many of you have already uh, written and shared and recorded testimonies for the testimony tapestry and we'll talk a little bit about what all this is about and what we uh what the hopes are so as all of us know and as we know right now because we're experiencing uh a beloved camp a beloved reunion tradition in a very different way um not just this year but last year in other words unfortunately much more than a year uh, there has been an unprecedented, uh, <laughs> but this has been unprecedented, the pandemic has been unprecedented in the life of the church. So never in our history as a church have we have our congregations gone so long without meeting in person. We have had to have, um, you know, reunions be uh, canceled or postponed because of natural disasters and other kinds of things that have happened. but. I don't know if we've done it two, had to do it two years in a row like this. And um, anyway, so as a result of this, all sorts of things uh, have been disrupted. Uh, all of anything that we might have had in complacency, any any sense that we do things week after week after week, that got it, it disrupted for all of us. Um, we all of us had to find new ways to have our Sunday services. We've all, um, I think, a lot of cases, congregations have experienced. Um, uh, meeting on Zoom like this, we're probably all extraordinarily familiar with the line, you're still muted, you're still muted, <laughs> still muted, you're breaking up, <laughs> all of this kind of, and, and, and that's just part of the um, uh, shared experience that we now have all all had. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, um, in uh, my own congregation, uh, we also have had uh, a, a different experience in terms of the uh, response that our Beyond the Walls uh, ministry has had globally, uh, which was not occurring prior to the pandemic. One of the um, special things for us as the, uh, as the service has reached all around the world has been a connection that we've generated uh, with the uh, Polynesian church. And so there's two or three dozen uh, people who wake up every Sunday at 6 a.m. in Tahiti and actually the other atolls and everything like that, the little islands, and are with us. Next Sunday, 
uh, uh, Lily Miao, who is, uh, is, is she's going to give the sermon <laughs> from Tahiti. And it's just, and I, I, it's so special. All of us who've been to World Conference know how special it is to have, uh, to be part of the French, you see the French Polynesian delegation, this, this heritage zone of the church, but we don't get to experience them. So in that sense, there have been some silver linings um, that we've experienced in the course of catastrophe. So there's suffering and it's been terrible and we're not, uh, there's nothing in any way that we've wished for, but a lot of times adversity does also uh, give us certain kinds of opportunities. Um, certainly for us uh, in Toronto, one of the um, core things that we have been doing as a congregation uh, was sponsoring um, invitational ministries on our uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, where we had a, a, a regular mindfulness meditation group that had been meeting for three years that included people who came week after week, people who were uh, paying tithes essentially to by, by being part of that group who had developed identity, at least with Toronto Center Place, and likewise our theology group, uh, even more so meeting people uh, with regulars meeting every Tuesday. Um, but the the, the trouble was, <laughs> this was in-person ministry, and it was designed as in-person ministry. And so it was not able to very easily translate in a lot of cases because um, we, had, we had really uh, had this invitation designed on the one hand to be in-person and on the other hand to not, uh, uh, we, didn't, we weren't making everybody give us their email addresses. In other words, so there was, it was less ease, able to go directly online because of the relationship that the community had. Uh, and so as a result of that, anyway, um, we'll have to, as we are reopening, we have to think what we're doing going forward in terms of restarting or recreating or also to make hard choices in that sense. So President Vizi uh, in the last couple of months has called upon the church to be mindful of what matters most as we contemplate reopening. And he's suggesting, I think, that we should use this unprecedented time to, to discern Christ's mission as a church, and in some sense, um, to make what could be um, hard decisions as we're thinking about things, which is not hard decisions, but let's say we had been doing things like mindfulness meditation and the way we were doing it, and that we had been experiencing very good results, but that might not be one of the things that we go back to because we may, may have to, I mean, all of our resources as a congregation, uh, as ministers are limited, and we may not be able to do that because it may not be as effective. We may have found things that are more effective as a result of, uh, of what we've learned during the pandemic. And certainly, I think a lot of us um, feel like, certainly we feel like with like our connection with people around the world, our connection with people in Polynesia, that's not something we want to lose as we go back to in-person. In other words, we are, we're all of us uh, very much desirous of getting into the space together and hugging each other as we want to just do this. We're hugging people. Uh, I mean, we, uh, when this morning, uh, Kathy and Pat and I each went, yeah, Pat, Kathy. And we went, and what's that supposed to be is we're supposed to run to each other and hug, you know, and we're not able to do more than just, ah, you know, and that's been true, unfortunately, as you know, for this time. But anyway, as much as we want that, we also don't want to lose a lot of the things that we've gained uh, in this time. And so, and so that, um, figures in, I think, to uh, the all voices discerning across Canada process that um, Scott Murphy uh, uh, asked uh, Apostle Art Smith and myself to help facilitate, but not in a sense to, um, not, but not with the idea of the top-down process at all, with a foregone conclusion that headquarters wants to have, but rather um, invited myself and Art to very much facilitate a grassroots um, uh, conversation where we really are trying to invite all voices and we're trying to do that according to uh, our principles. So we are people with a prophet, but we are also a prophetic people. And what we want is to ask everyone uh, in, who has shares in church identity in many different ways, to discern for themselves how God is calling us to be a community of Christ in Canada in the 21st century. Um, and it isn't, there isn't a, like I say, a foregone conclusion. This is what 
Scott Murphy's told us we want to have at the end, <laughs> in any sense. Uh, and every and as we're as we're doing this, what's going to emerge is it's going to emerge out of this sharing, dialogue, listening, praying, uh, revelatory process. Because all of us are called, and unity and diversity is one of our principles. And so we want to include all voices, young and old, of all backgrounds, Eastern and Western, people who are in the middle of cities like me, people who are uh, experiencing uh, church from a very small town or uh, community on the prairies, uh, all of the different um, places and, and backgrounds and so on uh, that are involved in the, how people experience the church in Canada. So as all of you all know, as uh, participants of the reunion, there's more than one way to experience identity with community in Christ in Canada. So a lot of us um, probably have our primary experience and our primary identity with the church in invested in our congregation. That's the, that's a, we, and we tend to think of that as the default. Um, uh, and so, in other words, I think of myself as being a part of the Toronto congregation and you have your congregations maybe, and then you have that as your identity. But there are a lot of people whose identity is with the Naranto reunion who may not have a lot of a congregational identity, and yet they'll come uh, to the reunion, and that reunion is a meaningful experience, it's a life-changing experience, it's an experience where they uh, are having church identity, even if they maybe in some cases aren't particularly religious, they might have, it might be a familial identity or uh, an identity that they have with the camp. Uh, but nevertheless, it's an identity that they share and it's an important identity that goes all the way back in the church to the 1870s, you know? And so there is a, it, it, it's, a it's a relevant one, a meaningful one. And those are voices we wanna hear in part of, as part of our discernment process. So we wanna listen to voices that are sometimes missed. And part of the process also is by sharing uh, uh, voices with people who are experiencing church identity in different ways, all of us can kind of increase our awareness of the diversity of ways that people experience and value the church. And we learn through diversity. We don't learn by, um, getting into a room with everybody who has all the same background and we all um, say what is, what is, you know we, we all say our experience and it turns out oh well we all agree <laughs> you know well then we didn't learn we don't really learn anything in that kind of a circumstance we learn when we have people who have a very different background from us who challenge us who say no that's not how I understand what's important uh, I my experience has been this and then we think oh I don't know where that came from okay we think about that you know and so that that challenge us that challenges me so as we have, um, as we've started the process and as we did in our first uh, Zoom conference, um, we identified several ways that people experience congregational, I mean, church, church identity. So one of those, as we mentioned here, congregational identities. So people who are in small town congregations and suburban congregations, people who are in urban congregations, that's certainly a core way of doing it. We also mentioned here, church reunions and camps in addition to the to the main uh, family camps there's also you know the senior high camps and things like that in other words there's other ways that people are are experiencing identity um, we wrote as one of these the church's institutional core because a lot of us um, you know while we're in a congregation um, it may well be that actually you're really focused and your and your identity with the church is with the denomination with community of christ itself with the heritage, with the history, and so on. That's a way that you can be experiencing church identity, uh, like I said, through youth ministries, both people who are youth, and that's how they're experiencing it, whether it may well be um, in there in a, in a church basketball program, <laughs> or it could be in that, same, in that same way, people who feel called to work with youth. Uh, and so that also is how they're primarily experiencing it. Online ministries, have really um, 
obviously in the, in the pandemic times, uh, exploded. And so that has been a new way that people have been experiencing church ministry. Maybe that, how do we have that go forward when we uh, continue, when we go back to in-person in so many more cases? We've had a bunch of inclusive and invitational ministries. So we mentioned, for example, our theology group, our meditation group that we've had in Toronto Center Place, but there are lots of others uh, where um, people are doing different kinds of missional activities, like, for example, uh, the Mother's Own Milk Project that is going out, uh, taking place in Calgary, the um, uh, working on, for example, uh, Zara and social housing, there's a, well, that's actually an activism one too, both of those. But anyway, in other words, things that you are doing to invite people, especially that may be different from uh, what you're doing on a Sunday. We're inviting everyone into to church with us on Sunday, but we may well be doing something um, like, for example, uh, a, uh, your uh, like your, your uh, a soup and sandwiches dinner and things like that, or or the different or the beef uh, anyway roast dinner they have in London, those kind of a things. Uh, those are also can also anyway there are different kinds of things that are like that. Some of us there are also groups like uh, uh, like the awakening spirituality. So in other words, people who are exploring different kinds of spiritual practices. Oh, one of the invitational ministries I was going to say, of course, creating connection. So and then the connection retreats. Uh, activism is also some of those things that I've been talking about. Global activism we have too. So there's local activism is things like Zarin and Cianito and others working on, on social housing. Global activism, things like World Accord. Um, you know, so that could be, and the, and the Peace Committee. And so those are different ways that people, they could, there are people who are on the Peace Committee um, who aren't going to local uh, congregations on Sunday. Um, they, they're more focused on the activism part than the going to church part. And then finally, we added here a, a, um, a group, uh, which was people who are really excited about the ongoing transformation of the church. The fact that the church is always looking to discern new things, new ways to do Christ's mission. And this is a thing that is exciting to a lot of people as well. So those are some of the ways. So let me just share a little bit about um, how the uh, process is kind of undergoing going forward and has been going in terms of a timeline in 2021. And this is going to go on into 2022. Um, but we had our first All Voices Zoom conference on May the 15th. And then uh, the very next day on the Sunday, we had our first um, set of the testimonies that people have given um, that were put together and aired in the testimony service. So some of the testimonies were shared in the Zoom conference. And then we also had breakout rooms that were sort of based on those groups that I just mentioned in the Zoom conference. And the beautiful thing is, uh, in terms of the listening, when we have the testimonies, we are able to all listen to each other and be inspired by the different testimonies. And we also are able to do that in small groups. And the neat thing in the conference was with every facilitator of each one of those groups, there was also a, a recorder and the recorder not only listened, but also wrote, took notes. And so detailed notes emerged. So it's not that um, you know, all of these conversations are not, uh, are just going into the ether and nothing is going to happen. This is, um, the whole idea of this process is as we get through, uh, the 2021 year, we are going to have listened to everything that is said in order to formulate even what 2022 looks like for the next stage of the all voices process. So we had a first testimony meeting on May 16th and Beyond the Walls and a, a second one on July 18th. And as I said, actually, there was a, a mini one yesterday in the Vancouver service uh, um, that Art spoke at as well. Um, we're going to go forward now into September. We will have our second All Voices Zoom conference that will resemble the first, but we'll build on it actually in September 25th. And that is also going to be the time when um, if unless there's technical problems, you never can say with a website for sure, but I'm hoping anyway that uh, we will be ready to debut the uh, the testimony tapestry website. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that after this, but uh, and so that should be taking place around the time of the second conference and then we'll have two more uh, testimony services where we're sharing the testimonies in the course of the year. So the questions initially here that we've invited everyone to discern on, and people have taken these in all kinds of different ways, um, but essentially is what interests or passions inspire you to be part of community of Christ? 
And what would you be excited to do and or to see as we step forward as a community? And so kind of the, uh, the analogy here we're making is essentially that for the pa interests and passions inspire you to be part of it, what's, your, what's, your, what's the fuel that's charging you? So what's charging you up? What has caused you to invest yourself in this community? And two, um, what, then the second part is, what do you want to use that fuel to do? <laughs> Where are we going? What, uh, what, would, what should this, uh, how should we live out Christ's mission in your community and in Canada in the 21st century? The very first um, conference, one of the things we were so excited by is the incredible um, diversity of participation all across Canada. You know, we didn't have everybody um, participate, you know, people are all invited, but, you know, people have things they're doing and so on and so, uh, so forth. But um, this is kind of like a graphic that is showing it's not really geographic, but it's kind of in the kind of order from west to east of, uh, of congregations uh, by people, individuals grouped by congregation, just because that's an easy way to group the data. Uh, and how many um, people participated from each uh, congregation in the conference, according to our best data. There, you know, if we're missing people, it may well be that they were lumped long in terms of the recorder, but um, we were excited that, uh, that this really hit all of the provinces and uh, that all of the regions and so on. Um, uh, are kind of represented and have participated. And so um, it was really nice to see that we're already starting to include all voices right out of the gate, uh, which doesn't always happen. A lot of times people are like, oh, I don't know what that is. And so they'll, they'll skip it the first time and then they realize, oh, this is pretty cool. And they go to the next one. Hopefully everybody is going to have seen, hey, this is really cool. <laughs> and we'll go to the next one. And these numbers will even be bigger. And, and some of the congregations that aren't represented will also be included in the next one. So one of the things that has emerged out of people sharing uh, their testimonies is what we're kind of calling our testimony tapestry. Uh, and so each one of these, um, so people are invited here, like I say, to discern on those two questions, formulate uh, a testimony, uh, which they write down. And then, and then we're, uh, we did our first round where we um, set up recording times and we recorded it on Zoom, just like you all are on right now. Um, uh, and then, and and then, uh, and then we were we, anyway. Then we were formatting them for the tapestry. So, what is the tapestry going to be doing? So you can kind of see how you know uh, how how cool it is, I think, already. But the idea of it is here: it is it also going to be integrated into a testimony tapestry website. And so, one of the things that I have always had um, just trouble with as a um, my background in business was in, in marketing and advertising. And one of the things that I've always just struggled with in terms of, let's say, doing marketing or advertising to ex just even explain uh, what's so amazing about this church uh, to people as I've wanted to do outreach, as I've wanted to do invitations. One of the things that is what's, because what's amazing about the church is the people. <laughs> and so what's amazing about the church is the community. And, and, so, and so going around and taking, you know, nice, pictures or exciting pictures of Toronto Center Place or other buildings or empty buildings or anything like that, that doesn't say anything about, I think, what's anyway, what's invigorating and exciting to me about the uh, um, community. And so what's what I'm, I'm, I love about this is now what we have here is all the community plus a testimony of why they are energized and excited about being in this community, and also, um, you know, their vision for the future. So what what they're hoping to do. And so ultimately, when this is on a website, and you'll see all these faces like this, what you can do is you can go to each one and, and watch it if you want to. You click on it and watch it. But what'll happen is also uh, a the still will come up, the person's name will be there, and then they'll it'll say what um, like a one quote from one of the things they said that's kind of an inspirational quote out of their testimony so you can kind of see what it is and it'll also say um, Kathy Baker <laughs> if, you, if you clicked on her Kathy Baker talked about 
Naranto reunion. <laughs> and so then that'll, and so that'll, and so it'll be a list of all of the different, she talked about Scarborough congregations. She talked about, uh, uh, you know, invitational ministries, whatever she's talking about, youth ministries. And so anything that she mentioned in her testimony, there will also be a link to that. And then that link will take you to a page that is talking about the Naranto reunion. And, and that'll not only be a page that, you know, kind of explains why you would want to be a part of Naranto reunion, but it'll also say, how can you volunteer to help out the Naranto reunion? How can you donate to in support of the Naranto reunion? <clears throat> and so the whole idea here is um, we take the missional activities that are inspiring all of us and we make them uh, easy access to people who want, uh, may want to be participating in such a thing. Um, and so anyway, I'm just, I think that the potential for the testimony tapestry uh, of all voices, I think is just gonna be really amazing um, because for one thing, it, it also helps us by teaching us all each other's stories and all the things that we're all doing. Um, one of the things that um, I've heard very consistently every time I go to both CWM and CEM uh, conferences are that people in different congregations say, you know, we've been doing all of these missional activities and, and why don't we hear about that at conference? Why aren't we, where's, where's the forum for sharing that? I think other people would want to hear about the things that we're doing here in Chatham, the things that we're doing here in New Liskert. And, and, it, and, and we're like, yeah, we would want to hear about that, <laughs> you know, because it could inspire us for things we're doing, or it could um, be something that we could all help in. And so one of the things, I mean, we're, again, like I say, the all voices process here is not, um, there's no end state that is a predetermined, but one of the things that um, we're, we're hopeful for uh, and we're seeing as one of the things that will emerge is as people are doing missional activities in all of the different congregations, we wanna provide a system where, um, where they share the results of that and that that is then taken up and shared uh, at the mission center level and the Canadian church level. And frankly, Herald House is actually, the Herald is very starved for content. And so all really up to the church level. And so the idea of it is with just a little bit of, um, of work on our side in terms of creating the, uh, the systems for how people can do reporting of it. It's sort of like uh, if any of your congregations, if any of you have been involved in the GROW, GROW program, this is one of the things we learned out of the GROW program, which has been very successful in, for the congregations that have done it, is that one of the jobs it assigned is a celebration officer. And so in this case, what the idea would be is um, whatever your congregation's preferred form of social media, whether you have a, a Facebook group that you're doing, whether you're, I guess, tweeting or whether it is through an email newsletter or anything like that, what we would do is we would invite, you know, we'll invite like people to take just one great, maybe one to three great action photos, uh, write like a one to two sentence thing and about what the, what the missional thing that they're doing is, and then have a system where that is uh, then shared then on the CEM uh, email newsletter. It's shared on the, uh, the CEM Facebook page. Uh, there is a blog on the, on the Canadian church webpage. So in other words, so that, that uh, all of these missional things that we're doing, all of our voices and all of our activities are inspiring all of us. And so that's certainly anyway, one of my hopes uh, coming out of it. And I think that that will also be um, part of the things that we'll be testing through the, through the process. And so let me, unshare this screen if I can. So I guess um, what we could do, uh, I, I think we still have another half an hour. And I guess there's a couple of ways we could go. I thought maybe we start with some, some Q&A and then we can also um, have a little bit of discussion about, uh, I, I guess, everybody's sense of discernment and what uh, in where we are kind of in this place is what we're thinking about having been um, in a lot of cases, we're still in lockdown, but as we are now emerging in the future, hopefully as, as, as things uh, more normalize, um, uh, you know, what, what our plans are or what we, what our visions and hopes are. Um, and so um, maybe if there's a, uh, um, 
do people like do people like do the hand raising or how is that doing kathy go ahead and you <laughs> you've i was it. just very excited when you were talking there about um the processes and systems um yes. the idea of of how we're going to step forward um because i felt very strongly that we tend to talk about what we have done instead of what we are going to be doing or what we are doing and please come and join us so that if someone right. is doing something somewhere uh, and i go whoa i would really like to do that um then i can you know i can join in which which i love that or i can tell someone else who i know loves to do that to join in um that happened to me just recently just a short little story um yeah. because i was talking to a friend a non-member friend and uh just saying about how i was so excited about the children's program for neuronto and she came back and said i have two nieces exactly do you, do you think they could join and right. i said well yes <laughs> and so i thought well she's going to ask the mothers and of course you know the way that we think we go no they're not going to want to join well they did the yeah. two nieces did want their two little girls four little girls all together to join in and then so we got everything all, all done and people signing up but we got a few other names that were in their neighborhood and i contacted my friend i think that these belonged somehow to your family and she's going well, i don't know well it turned out that the one little girl had invited her friends who had also signed up well my friend was thinking oh no you know she's been telling her friends that they can join this and i'm saying <laughs> no this is great, great. <laughs> this is great so yeah. she actually contacted her niece and said uh, what her daughter had done was so wonderful it wasn't something to be concerned about it was something to celebrate but that's just a short little story right there yeah. instead of four little girls there were six <laughs> actually there was five little girls and a boy very so, okay. good excellent yeah yeah so um i mean i don't know I, I, i've said a bunch of different times that uh, one of the things that often happens in my experience at community of christ is that we're the church that can't find a bushel big enough to hide our light under, you know, and, and yet we're often doing such wonderful things um, that people would want to be a part of. And not only just by the way, like even what Kathy's talking about, which is we're here, we're doing activities that people, anybody want to be a part of. But another thing that um, people also would like to do often is help out with help out with doing the service thing that we that we're doing as an activity. So in other words, if we're having um, you know, like a, a dinner that the congregation has been hosting for the neighborhood for people who, um, uh, you know, who are who are poor or have, who, are, who have different needs and, they, and this is an open banquet for them, but it's becoming a burden because we're getting older and it's harder for us to do it. One of the things that we can do is invite people to help serve the way that members of the congregation have been because you get you get something out of doing that and other people would too. And so I think we um, we if we always remember to add that uh, invitation component to everything that we do, um, that 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 actually is is how we get people to join us and be part of what we're doing. You know, we're doing wonderful stuff. And so anyway, so part of those that, that to making it easier for that, though, is having some of these systems. And so, um, you know, we, we're all of us are at different um, age groups. And 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 I would say that there were several folks in, in, in my congregation, for example, who had decided at a certain point, well, you know, they had made the decision when computers started happening that nah, that was going to be too newfangled for them and they were just going to ride it out and not, <laughs> and not have to worry about ever being online or, or anything like that. Well, a lot of them have actually ended up being online in the course of the pandemic. You know, people broke down and actually, you know, are able to at least have a tablet and be on Zoom and, and, and frankly have enjoyed it. Um, and so in that same way, um, what, the reality of it is that in the past as a church, you know, when we when we when we were um, we've always been pioneers in communication stuff. The the church in in Independence was the was the, I think the first church, if not in the country, but anyway, the first church certainly in in the Kansas City that had a radio station. And there was a they built a radio tower on the top of the stone church, you know, and and you know it was KLDS, and the, and it was a very early um, example of using a media to do invitational ministry. Um, uh, R.C. Evans here in 
uh, uh, in Toronto was famous for. They rented out the the theaters, and 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 he asked he had to actually people complained about it. they're like theaters are are places that are immoral. How can you possibly have a preaching service and so on and have anything good come out of theaters? And he says, you know what, we're not we're getting to people that we wouldn't get to. Uh, if we weren't in the theater, there's people who would never cross the threshold of a church and, and, and so on, uh, who come, come to the theaters. And so and so in this very same way now, I mean, um, you know, there was a time when what you could write on the front of your church's sign was something that, you know, everybody is seeing and that's how you communicate. It's less true now. Now, how are people communicating? They're communicating through these different kinds of social media. They're sharing memes and so on on, on Facebook. And so really in order to have, um, to be invitational and have your missional activities that you're doing as a congregation, um, to, to have them actually, let's say, exist and be invitational now, there just has to be a little bit of um, sharing them on social media. And so if we can create, you know, systems that allow us to do it more easily, even those of us who um, weren't, weren't as technologically savvy and all those things who you know, they're like, oh, I don't know a tweet from this or that, <laughs> you know, there, there are systems, you know, that to make it that we can make it a relatively simple so that once you learn the process, you know, you can share this and it'll be funneled into our overall communication strategy and plan. And that will, I think, allow all of us um, not only to be invitational, but to all be inspired by the incredible mission that is happening across Canada that we're not aware of because we don't all know each other's stories. Uh, and also to be inspired by either how can we help that particular um, ministry that is happening? Maybe it's happening in British Columbia, but we could still help out and be part of it from here. Or maybe it inspires us to do something in our own community because we say, oh my goodness, I never thought that we could do that as a church. And so, um, We've got some. That's 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 all voices in a nutshell. But that I feel like I'm I'm just about as excited as I could be for this process, and that every everybody hope is being anyway. That you're all invited to be part of it, and you, so many people have been a part of it. Yes, Colleen has a question. I don't know. If I can see a hand. <laughs> to unmute, Colleen. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um... For six years, our daughter was the director for junior high at Naranto. Yeah. And at, at the time, partway through those six years, was the time that pe they were fully supporting people older than senior high age to continue going to senior high. So yes. that meant junior high could not get enough staff because oh. people were taking their holidays and going to junior high senior high yes and we tried to explain this to at, at the uh um leaders meetings and everything else but it just went over everybody's head anyways what natasha did is the one year we flew in not with church money with our money our son and his fiance from Lamoni, Iowa, to be staff. Mm -hmm. He has cousins that are Catholic, because my side of the family is Catholic. So uh, two girl cousins and a boy cousin and another friend who went to Catholic school with them. They were all in Catholic school. They all came to be staff. And then they came back again and they said, um, I've, one of them said, I felt like I've always been here and they made connections in our church and the church uh, there, and they're still connected with them. And my youngest niece, who's Catholic came, um, for the four years, four or five years as a camper. And then she waited a few years till she was old enough to be a leader. She came back as a leader. And so did another church boy named Gary Williams. Well, on September the 4th, Gary and Catherine will have been dating for 10, <laughs> for 10 years. Wow. <laughs> Their wedding is booked next uh, September 24th, 2022 in Burlington at Royal Botanical Gardens. So here we got 
me, I was Catholic when I met Kevin and here my family are all connected now. And it was the same with when I got married, my parents didn't want me to marry somebody who belonged to the reorganized church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because they never heard anything good or bad, never ever heard anything about it. <laughs> anyway, so it came from um, them not wanting to come to our wedding. And by the, when 10 years later, Kevin was being ordained as uh, a priest. Well, my mother asked to be picked up to come to the ceremony. And when I was baptized, nobody in the Catholic side of the family came. But when Natasha was baptized, their niece, she phoned them all up and told them the date and they all came. Uh -huh. and, and my mother had names of all the congregates that um, we could be at their house after church. If my mother needed to get a hold of us or wanted to get a hold of us, she had lists of people from our church that we might be at their house if we couldn't, because we didn't have cell phones then, right? Yeah. So it's just... Uh, well, that's a wonderful... So that's like, yeah, so this is a wonderful um, response to... Like you say, it was the initial initial invitation. The fact that you invited people to help out on the staff and then and brought more people in. I will say one of the best ways that we've always had in the reorganization to convert new members is to marry them. <laughs> we only only so many of us are single that can do that right now, but I definitely uh, advocate that. Go to anybody who's able who's not married right now. Go get somebody. No, but yeah, that is that definitely has worked. And so, uh, but I also love the story that you have of of actually the increasing familiarity, right? So, in other words, initially um, people are very skeptical of the this other organization they never heard of. But as but as as you've grown in community with them, then uh, then there's there's acceptance, and in fact. Uh, now, now they don't have to become you, the Catholics. Don't have to become communion of Christ to have to have a, a respect between the sides of the family, right? When my when my father died suddenly at the age of sixty three, um, playing hockey after scoring a goal, um, the Catholic Women's League that my mom was a part of um, said they were gonna they were gonna bring everything for the reception to my oldest brother's house they brought l white linen tablecloths all their fine china and there were reorganized latter-day saints that were bringing coffee makers that were bringing all kinds of food so it was a collaborative effort again to this man who originally uh, he would not walk me down the aisle at my wedding because he felt he was giving me to another church. <laughs> and I didn't join the church for eight and a half years. And so when I told my parents, I'm getting baptized, I'm joining the church, my mother says, oh, well, I always thought you were a member of that church already. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Colleen, thank you so much. Um, there's a couple other hands. Why don't we, uh, why don't, Susan, I think you were maybe first. Thank you, John. I wanted to first say I appreciate all your, um, your theology, which you've taped. Um, Leandro right now is doing a um, virtual choir. Yes. And for the last few weeks, my husband and I have been learning how to do that yes um especially this week it's been crazy unfortunately tomorrow night is the last one um i'm just i'm hoping that can continue but as well <laughs> as well our congregation's doing a book club and somebody's like i've never done zoom how do i do it yeah. so i don't know how there can be I don't know, help for people that have never done YouTube, but um, what, what, or, or, or doing Zoom, mm -hmm. what, what I'm also asking mm -hmm. is, because our congregation is trying to do a hybrid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
worship. <laughs> so we've done it twice and there's some glitches. So it'd be helpful to have a technical person <laughs> that we could, I mean, Leandro has been, it's wonderful. He says, you can email us any problems you have with Audacity yes. and sending files and all that. So we're working on that end, but we're also working on the, um, during Sunday hybrid. So trying yes. to, I don't know if, cause that's what you guys do. So I don't know if there's help for people to try to do hybrid worship services as well as putting together our choirs? Well, for putting together the choir, um, the help is Leandro, <laughs> as he's been helping you the way he's been doing it. And I'm, I'm and, and I think that that, that he, the fact that um, I, I think, I think it was maybe Kathy that invited him to do that, but it was a, it was a, an exact expression of the principle we're talking about here, which is Leandro is already doing all of this, you know, wonderful work that he only he can do, but he then now has invited other people, right? And so it's that same principle of things that we're doing, uh, invite others to, you know, kind of do. And then in some cases he does inqu it does require this, this component of our, um, of our our mission, develop disciples to serve, and and I know that uh, the learning curve for virtual choir is not the easiest thing, and so I, I appreciate the amount of uh, you that you're putting effort into it and everything like that. I know that Leandro, there not everybody has been able to stick with it, but the people who stuck through um, anyway, he really appreciates and and I know that one of the things is that there is going to be in that case ongoing. Um, there's going to be, a, and that'll be up to Leandro to talk about it. But anyway, there's going to be an ongoing um, uh, process he'll talk about tonight. But I think of where we you know where um, where essentially, uh, you know, as he's continuing to make the choir week after week after week, if there's possibilities of essentially, you know, see, being part of the process that he's doing, and then that's some hands-on stuff that helps with with uh, learning it yourself in terms of as you're continuing to grow those skills after the seminar ends. Um, in terms of um, uh, general technical assistance for like how to teach people how to do Zoom and things like that. Um, uh, I don't know that we're doing any seminars like that. I mean, but I, I'm not as, as familiar with everything the Mission Center is doing. So I know that uh, Troy is doing all kinds of um, of great work in term uh, in terms of being, you know, he's kind of taken the lead on, uh, on that kind of Zoom technological support through the whole crisis at the Mission Center. And so I guess um, I would, I guess I would, in terms of Zoom support, I would direct that to him. I'm not actually, I'm not actually expert at any of this. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, I can, I can turn my Zoom on and share my screen and things like that. But I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not actually a, a Zoom um, technically proficient person, but I do know that, you know, there are people who, I mean, Zoom is something that people can kind of, kind of learn. It's not the easiest thing initially for people who aren't savvy, but you can, you know, like in terms of walking through it, in terms of the hybrid service, this is a tough a tough thing, um, uh, you know. There were there are several congregations that are doing that before, um, for example, and and even now. So uh, Woodfield in London uh, is got, is one. There is the uh, Edmonton, and uh, there's one more that I'm thinking of offhand, but certainly Edmonton and Woodfield, and that is going to be more like something that is going to be replicatable by. A regular congregation, I would say that the 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 process that we actually developed for Toronto is actually not replicatable, <laughs> unless you have um, very dedicated technical staff. But it's a it's a special, strange hybrid thing, and the system is extremely complicated. If we actually do the diagram of it, you wouldn't believe the you know the two hundred moving parts and and so on in that. But there is a um, but I so so for example, what I would say is uh, the. Uh, um, the people to contact, especially on a hybrid, are Woodfield and Edmonton. Edmonton, um, they're very um, helpful, <laughs> and, and so they have a system where the, they have camera, and 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 their their stream, um, their their. I don't I don't actually know exactly how their system works because I'm again not a particularly technical person, but um, that's where I'd send you. Because I know Woodfield, they record it and then put it on. A YouTube channel. I, we're trying to do simultaneously. Okay, so Edmonton's is live. Okay, thank you. And it's you. simultaneous, so that's who I'd ask. And I'm sorry, it was a uh, Dulce. We also. <laughs> Thanks, John. I wanted to thank you 
for explaining the tapestries, but I also wanted to let you know um, that it's going to become a very useful tool for me when I'm working in El Salvador. Apparently I have to preach two to three times a week and I don't speak Spanish. So you could you can see that that's going to be a lot of fun. But yeah. um, you know Yesenia, and uh, I yeah. call her my Central American daughter, my El Salvadorian daughter. But we yeah. were, we've talked about um, their congregation was cut very deep with COVID. And a lot of their members are very old and lots of family extensions, just like most of the church. And so one of the things that I have down for when I'm down there for five months is, is doing something similar. Um, I don't have the tech at all, but I'm working on it um, to, to gather the stories for Valdor congregation, oh, which, which is at Camus, is where the women's group works out of. It's one of their outreach programs that I work with. So it's a nice to have an example and a mentorship, but also it's motivating and initiating um, some drawing together for a group of people who've been so isolated. They've gone years and months. They didn't even know there was a new hymnal. I'm so excited to hear that you're doing that. Um, I, I, that's been kind of a, um, an exciting and unexpected, and we're not exactly sure always what to say, uh, response to All Voices Canada, because people, when they have been listening, you know, on Beyond the Walls, and not it's not only Canadians that are watching the service. And so when they're listening to the Canadian testimony services, they're like, can I share my testimony? I want to, you know, so we're getting a lot of, uh, of, of asks from the U.S., you know, about people like, why aren't we doing this in the U.S.? I want to do this, you know, and um, one of the one of the cool results is um, we're actually going to have uh, in October, there's going to be an all voices discerning across French Polynesia service. Mm. And so they're doing the exact same thing that you're doing. They're they're getting young and old. Uh, you know, different, everybody, everybody, different ways that they are experiencing the church in French Polynesia, they're going to gather, uh, you know, seven or 12, however many testimonies and seven of them, let's say, will be in the service and we'll have that first service in French Polynesia. So other people are uh, kind of following the model because of the results that we've had so early already in Toronto, I'm sorry, in Canada, that is, uh, that is exciting to other people. And I've had to refer to the people in the U.S. I have to say, well, you got to talk to your apostle or your mission center you know what i mean but the apostle in in uh in uh, french polynesia was very eager to go ahead and do that and i'm so happy to have uh el salvador those stories there how neat well and thank you for inviting yesi yesinia to yeah. beyond the walls because you've given her um the confidence I'm to so try happy. some things yeah. and uh it's it's really exciting for me and for for them, I can't wait. So I'll get back to you next year and see how it went. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Yeah, she has been wonderful. You know, part of our um, our process in Beyond the Walls is also always about, I mean, it's always about invitation, but it's always about develop disciples to serve, right? And so, so you see, well, she, Senia is, is, uh, was somebody who just regularly um, uh, comments on the threads right so she would have said you know hi from you know from El salvador greetings from El salvador, and, and all those kind of things and and so we were so happy to have her participating that way then we invited her what we always do we invite people to read a scripture first you know and and that works well and then and we say oh well will you will you give a prayer and so on and so that's how we kind of um, yep. try to also like you say develop disciples to serve build confidence and and she has become such a wonderful part of our community we just love yeah. it were you aware she was just baptized last year? Nadine Manson and I baptized and confirmed her um, last uh, February. I think Nadine so, said that to me, but yeah, it's so, so yeah. amazing and so wonderful. So it's, it, that's what I mean about giving, giving ideas to her and ideas to people who you don't know what you don't know. And uh, Absolutely. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Thank you so much. Mary Jean had a question or a comment comment <laughs> yeah um i really appreciate the fact that you, you you raised up this um idea of diversity and of um discerning you know being a discerning people and you know for the last year i've had the opportunity to support awakening spirituality which is an emerging congregation right and um i've been really excited about that um talking about diversity I mean, this is a diverse group these are people who uh, just really need support on their spiritual journey in various ways. 
And, you know, in the last year, we've been able to reach over 1,100 people. Wow. I've been tracking, you know, who's coming, who's, who's responding to our online sessions. Yeah. And I have over 1,100 names in our, in our database. Um, that's amazing to me. Absolutely. Amazing that these people are, um, you know, searching for supports um, on their spiritual journey and excited about coming together with other people with, with, uh, with like interests and like minds. And uh, so there's so much yet that we haven't explored. We're, we're just online. We yeah, haven't yeah. yet met in person. Yeah. So, you know, to see where this is going to go, I think is, is really exciting. And it's just been fantastic. We've had so many positive comments from people. You know, this is the place that they want to be. We've had some who are now starting to support us financially on a monthly basis. You know, so uh, these people are getting, you know, some of their needs met um, that they wouldn't get in traditional congregations in, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different form of spirituality. So talk about diversity. <laughs> that's yeah, exactly yeah. what it is. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And that's wonderful, the, the report uh, of that and uh, of your, the experience and how that is going. I mean, so, so when, when, we did the, um, when we did the breakout rooms, the way it works is you can't, you're kind of like called into multiple rooms in a way because the awakening spirituality, on the one hand, you know, here, here's an, ex, an amazing success of an online ministry. Here's an amazing success of an invitational ministry. And yet this is also about exploring spiritual practices together. So you had a bunch of different groups to, that are kind of drawing you in to share different um, uh, elements of that experience, different ways that the um, church is experienced by different people. But you're absolutely right. Not everybody is going to fit into um, small town congregation or suburban urban congregation or something like that. There are all kinds of people who are experiencing meaningful identity, whether or not they even call it, you know, let's say with, with the church's mission, you know, whether or not even they are, let's say they don't have to be members to be doing that by any means, you know, and there are so many different ways that, uh, that that is uh, happening already across Canada, that it's exciting that uh, the, just right at the uh, outset, that that's the, that's the marching orders here, or that's the, you know, of, of what we want. We want all voices as we're discerning so that we can share, share that, those experiences. Thank you. That's awesome. Kathy. And I just really encourage uh, everyone, who, especially I'm thinking about uh, what you were just saying there, Mary Jean, that uh, we need those voices on the uh, all voices. They, we need those voices. Yes. And this Wednesday and Thursday when Daniel Harmon is coming to talk about discernment and he's starting a new, a brand new thing at the temple exactly for this. Um, we need to kind of help him along, maybe in a direction he is unexpecting, uh, because we are groundbreaking here. We are. We are breaking ground, and uh, this is just so exciting hearing all of these voices here saying yes. what's happening, and you can imagine how we could inspire other people. Absolutely. Um, things that for many years now, things that uh, the innovations that uh, so many gifted people, so many talented ministers are, are having here in Canada, like I say, that is resonating all around the church where people are saying, well, can we do that too? Is it only Canada, <laughs> across Canada? You know, can we, can we start to have uh, some of these programs and so on? And so um, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing, um, I don't know, a benefit that we have as a calling here to be you know, forerunners and innovators in, in the Canadian church because we can help, uh, uh, potentially help others who are struggling with some of our same issues. And, and if they see the ideas, they're going to want to, uh, they're going to want to see if they can implement them, that them, themselves. Um, Colleen, you had a... Uh, Kevin took a week's holiday a few years ago, and we went to the Parliament of World Religions in Toronto. Yes. And uh, some people, smart people from our church, had made up wonderful brochures about Canadian con connecting what's it what's yep. is creating and, connection yeah 
connection and coffee and conversation. And me and Kevin took some of these brochures around and we were stopping at every table and meeting everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we would show these to people and they were amazed. They says, why haven't we heard of this? <laughs> did you tell them, well, we did go to the first parliament of world religions and we've been there every single time as a church. <laughs> were amazed at <laughs> programs and the, the literature, how wonderful the literature looked and they wanted to know more and they wanted to keep the brochures. And it was just, an amazing, amazing experience that um, it's just too bad that our church wasn't in the main platform. They right. were back in that little room. And if I think if you had been out in that main and not just in that little room, but they were, we were way at the back. Right. Anyways, but me and Kevin were, were travelers and we had a fantastic time meeting people. Kevin got a turban put on his head. And <laughs> he, he just, it was just one of the best. That and our two different weeks of encounters with world religion, two right. of the best, three of the best experiences of our lives. Oh, I'm so happy you had that experience. And, and that, that's, you know, that's one of the best ways, like you say, you know, to get into communicate community with people. So that was a way, like you say, that you were doing it with people who, you know, you didn't have to marry, you got to just meet them and put on a hat and, and they get to find out who, and they get to find out who we are and, and you got to find out who they are. And that's just a wonderful way to yeah. do invitation. It was amazing. Just amazing. Well, folks, I think my time is up. Questions or comments? Yeah, Catherine. Hi, everybody. Part of the discernment, how are we going forward when people in the all voices come forward with concerns? Are we trying to create working groups? How are you going to move forward on those that we're still having difficulty on some of the topics that come out in the all voices? How are we moving forward with those? Yes, absolutely. So, um, like I say, in that sense, the um, this is not all, you know, and not everybody who said, you know, everything about the church, you know, and everything like, we're not, it's not all just a hunky dory, oh, this is all great fest, <laughs> because, because that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be as useful, that wouldn't really be useful. We also have to, you know, one of the ways that we've grown as a church is by identifying um, uh, shortcomings that we have and th and places where we're still following, sh falling short. And, and, and these are, are uh, meant to be very authentic testimonies. And that includes, um, uh, in, in many cases, um, people who have made, uh, you know, both constructive criticisms, you know, and and admissions of where we're falling short in in, in their feeling as and their vision is how we can correct that, and so and so like I say, the um, the process here is not um, uh, it's not ended with with what we're even talking about. So like the first this first two conferences are gathering voices together, discerning on these first two questions. And then the next year and the next set is going to be a next, um, let's say a next part of it. And so, and that is going to, I think to your point, Catherine, um, part of that is going to be um, discerning on some of the issues that, that have been raised that we need to need to really address and deal with. And so I like your even uh, suggestions you have here, maybe um, gathering some of those voices together to create, let's say, uh, uh, think tanks as we're kind of as we're kind of kind of brainstorming among interested people who have um, like either raised that issue or who may have some uh, thoughts and expertise in that and and pulling them together to to kind of let's come up with what we're not just going to uh, raise issues that we like or or issues that are problematic but we also need to think okay well how can we maybe work through things so in some cases um, um, we need to have, it may be that we need to, you know, know better about, you know, we need training so that we, so that, so that we're, we're doing things better. Like we did this a little bit with, we're trying to, um, 
not addressing, for example, we had it in our mission center conference and not addressing mental health when we're at the at the reunions and things like that. And so trying to get uh, people to be able to go through at the minimum some some of the mental health training, which I know, for example, Leandro took because of so that we could have that for the um, creating connection retreats. So in other words, things like that, where we're coming up with proactive solutions to concerns and problems raised. So on the website with all voices, I'm hoping there might be like a Google Doc where you start listing here's the the discernment that's coming out the themes yes and then within the themes maybe people that have expressed an interest so that we can yeah. come together and create these these think tanks so it's not just you and art and leandro that's you right know, how do we get it so that the rest of us are available or yeah. can contribute to those themes so maybe that might be one thing that we can go forward with in the future. I think that's a great idea. So yeah, in addition to the tags, like when I was even talking about that everybody talked about, so-and-so talked about reunions, right? And so then that was gonna take you to the reunions, but we can have tags for all of the kinds of issues that are talked about, right? And so then when you press that tag, then it'll, then it'll immediately call up the five people that talked about that. And that way, you know, so the person who is seeing, um, look, what we really need to be working on is, is promoting peace in our communities or whatever. And so the, the people who are talking about that, you'll then you'll get that list of those being there and that'll just be an instant cross tab for anybody. They don't have to go to art or me then because this will be right there on the website. Uh, yeah, Daryl. John, I wanna initially just say, thank you very much for introducing this topic because so many of us have not participated, myself included, in the all voices, but I keep thinking I should, I should. <laughs> but I really like the conversation of, of 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 you doing this presentation for us, because not only it talks about um, our testimonies, and I re I realized for myself growing up, and I think yesterday on on um, beyond the walls there was. Uh, um, forget the lady's name. She said she's been 50 years in the church. Many of us have been in, in the church much even longer than that. Yes, yeah, right. Sylvia. Or, and um, I have seen so much change from when I was a kid in the church to where I am now, which inspires me to see that we, we truly are a church that is... Um, doing the things that we believe that we sense God is calling us to to do uh, for example revelation revelation is just not when I was a kid <laughs> revelation has been expanding and as I probably hit my 40s and 50s I thought, oh or, great Scott I'm not sure about this <laughs> um, yeah. but now it's but now it's a non-issue because yeah. i think as we expand our visions and expand our awareness for the for the holy however we want to call god god is continually opening our minds and into the future where we're becoming the type of church that or the type of community that God wants us to become. So I'm, I'm delighted to hear about the all voices now, but I'm also, I want to thank Catherine for talking about where are we going with this? Because it opens the doors to say the one song, we limit not the truth of God. Well, right. do we or do we not? <laughs> well, we're, we're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we might. We're, but... we're now... We're now stuck in this time frame for another yes. whatever period of time. So I, I just want to say, John, thank you, and and Scott, and um, uh, the um, Northern Fine. Ontario reunion started yeah. off this morning. Wonderful, we've been at the Peace Poll. John, your talk is is talk of peace and how we're moving towards through the discernment of God. So I look forward to our future in in listening to one another. So thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, Daryl, and I really appreciate um, your, you know, like testimony of your experience that you're tied in like that to, that's what we called in that one breakout room, um, we call that, you know, people who are really committed to the church's ongoing transformation. And, and, uh, and so, and, um, and when we were first pitching that as a room, people were like, what does that mean, you know, <laughs> but, but I really do feel there's a lot of people for whom that's been the experience and for whom that's where their church identity is with and that they both appreciate the, how they've had that experience in their life, but also uh, that they want us to go forward because they don't want continuing injustice to keep happening. In other words, how are we 
um, correcting things that like Catherine's asking or how are we getting to the not just stuck in this time as you're saying. Thank you. Uh, Leandro's had his hand up. Probably going to correct me for all of the things that I have miss said. <laughs> Everything you said is wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> take it all back. I take it all back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now, I just quickly, uh, I just want to say two things. First, I want to uh, address what Susan was saying. Um, this virtual choir workshop is my first attempt at just teaching how I do certain things. And I do get, of course, a lot of questions about how do we transition from a traditional worship service to a hybrid worship service. And of course, we are thinking about that. And what I find very uh, hopeful is that two years ago, very few people were considering that question as something like they thought this is not for our congregation. And now, you know, whether we liked it or not, we we got a taste of reality and this reality of, you know, just going hybrid is not, it, it doesn't seem so uh, uh, scary. It doesn't seem so, uh, you know, something that you know, we're never gonna get there. So I, for, because of that, and because we hear so many voices asking, how do we do this? We're definitely thinking about it. And um, so we need to get coordinate first uh, uh, with, other people who are already doing it because everyone is doing it differently. So from Vancouver to Toronto, we're, we're all doing things differently. You mentioned um, Susan Woodfield. So there's a lot of people in Canada alone that are doing this already. So we're trying to uh, just get together to share all this knowledge so that we can start just making sure that people know how to do it without having to reinvent the wheel. We have done that process and took a long time. <laughs> so you'll, you'll hear about this uh, as we start adding all these suggestions that we heard today uh, to a All Voices uh, web page. The other thing is like, you know, it's just, I'm hearing all this and, you know, I, I think that the Canadian church, this is something I don't say on Beyond the Walls, uh, although this meeting is being recorded, so I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian church is positioned to lead right now, and we have to take that opportunity. Um, around the world, the United States is not a good brand right now. Um, so anything that comes from the United States in this moment whether it is a church or whatever, is not something that people are going to just listen without at least a little bit of suspicion. Uh, because the, the US unfortunately has earned that uh, reputation. But Canada, as someone who immigrated to Canada, I wasn't born in Canada, Canada is a good brand and we have to take advantage of that as a church. Uh, so I just wanted to say that. So it's this, we have a gold opportunity uh, in Canada to, to just move forward. Nice. Thank you, Landro. Um, all right. Well, we'll look forward to, um, well, you know, the details. I mean, Landro, you're having your, your next workshop tomorrow as part of the East Camping tomorrow night. And, um, and there's a full program, folks. <laughs> Uh, the Duranta reunion, and we're starting every morning at, at Manitoulin Island at the same time as this morning. And uh, there's just uh, so much guest ministry, you know, everybody uh, from coming everywhere. So I and just encourage you all to be a part of it. So well, thank you very much, John, for a very interesting session. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning.